Kevin Lewis, calm down. Uh, <laughs> um, hi everybody. Uh, uh, so there's a, there's a new book. Um, who, who here has read it? Uh, already? Okay. Uh, so now I know who to look out for in line, and the rest of you, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm signing it before you actually read it. Because uh, uh, golly, I mean, yeah, do whatever you want to to Harry, Jim. Lay a finger on Molly, people get all worked up. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, hi. Um, the way I usually do this is to just say, hey, uh, does anybody have any questions? And, and then I'll, I'll try and answer them. Because um, they asked me to talk last night, and, and that, that didn't go well. I had to tell a story. Um, so we'll just go to questions and answers. So, yeah, right here. Great. Do you actually keep a list of all the characters and when you started them and when they're dying and stuff like that on a spreadsheet or anything like that? Do I actually keep a list of all the characters uh, and when I started them and when they're dying or things like that on a, sp on a, on a, on a spreadsheet? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, uh, I, I have people that help me keep track of that. Um, uh, and yeah, this is one of them. This is, Priscilla has the has the, the the most demented nerd brain for continuity I've ever seen. Uh, so yeah, if, if you really want to know something, ask her. She knows better than I do. Uh, many of the readers do. A lot of the beta readers uh, uh, read for me, and they're just you know just fans. Um, uh, they'll they'll say, hey Jim, you need to remember this detail or that detail. I go, oh okay, right, I'll, I'll fix it. Uh, uh, Priscilla's comments are usually more along the line of, no, this character is actually uh, three months older than this, which makes him at least this many years old instead of this many years old. Just here, I'd be like, oh. And, 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 and then, you know, don't you ever have anything better to do? She's like, I can't help it. It's stuck in my brain. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when I want to know something, uh, when I need to check up on something on the series of continuity, I'll go out and read the fan Wikipedias because, you know, if, if, if Ender game, Ender's Game taught us nothing, it was that you play far harder than you work. Uh, and as long as somebody else is doing my work for me, I'll, I'll, I'll go look at it there. So it's more than I, do. Uh, uh, I try to keep track. Um, as far as characters, particular endings, uh, uh, I don't have them all in mind. I don't have uh, like the, the actual, you know, everything going to happen to everybody. Um, so really, I can't guarantee anybody in particular is going to survive. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I can kind of generally see what's ahead for people, and there, 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 there are some grim things uh, involved for some of the characters, and uh, uh, less grim things for others. But, but anyway, uh, yeah, are you in the black shirt? Um, so uh, a couple of, of things. Uh, one, uh, has Molly? Speaking of Molly, has Molly kind of become you know Harry too in the sense that? You first look and say, okay, how can I make things difficult for Harry? And then secondarily, how can I make things difficult for Molly? Okay, the question is, how Molly, has Molly become Harry too? Uh, in, in as much as, now that I've made things difficult for Harry, do I then now need to make things difficult for Molly because it's just not enough? <laughs> and of course it's just not enough. Uh, 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 but, no, Molly, Molly is where she was because she uh, made the questionably wise choice of being the one to try and fill Harry Dresden's shoes. Um, and she really did not have the equipment to do it, or at least not to do Dresden's job in the same way that Dresden did his job. Uh, uh, she had to be, she had to be a, 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 lot, a bit sneakier and a lot scarier in order to get it done. Um, and, and even then, I don't think she really did it as well as Harry did. Uh, there's all kinds of trouble that's never come to Chicago in the Dresden universe because people go, where should we set, the, where should we set this job up? Oh, it's Chicago? No, not Chicago. There's a crazy guy there. You <laughs> might just get involved. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's hit Kansas City instead. <laughs> um, so, uh, in as much as that, it's, she hasn't really caught any more flack than, than I would expect to give anybody who wanted to step up and be, and be a major league wizard. Uh, it's like, here's your problems. You know. But... Uh, uh, well, she, she's probably caught a little bit more because she's hanging around in Dresden and she's within the blast radius of, <laughs> of, of, the, of the horrible fortune that comes falling on him. So, you know. But other than that, you know, she could have been in somewhere else doing other stuff. Uh, she's hanging out with Harry, so therefore she must be punished. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, with, with the bandage on the arm. Oh, what was Justin planning that he needed to spend the time and energy to train up two uh, council-level enforcers 
rather than just using the standard school henchmen. Okay, what was Justin planning that he needed to spend time and energy training two white council level enforcers to come up behind him rather than just using ghoul, ghoul type henchmen or your regular thugs? Uh, you can't possibly expect me to answer that. <laughs> and then, eventually, you'll find out. And then eventually, you'll find out. Uh, uh, over here in the white shirt. Have I ever thought about going back to the books I wrote before the Dresden Files and try to get them published? No, I, I don't hate you that much. <laughs> I, I would not have made Osama bin Laden read those books. <laughs> uh, that was stuff that I wrote before I started paying attention uh, to how you write a good story. And uh, uh, I did go back and scrap them for parts. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of those parts wound up in Codex Alera, and some of them will wind up in other things in the future. Um, but, uh, uh, but no, I mean, those books were, that was what I was learning. They weren't really much good. I don't even have copies of them anymore. Uh, and I, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, really. Uh, a lot of people are like, no, no, you should buy those garage books. I said, like, why? They suck. <laughs> I mean, there's, there, there, there's, there's, there's plenty of lame books out there. I mean, we don't need any more of those. Uh, uh, at least let me write the ones that are sort of semi confident so. uh, uh, Right here in the um, I read somewhere that you weren't happy with the sci-fi interpretation of your book and that you were waiting to get rights back so you could sell it to somebody like HBO or somebody that you had more hands-on where you could make them, the series more like your book. Is that true? The question is, he, he, he said that he heard somewhere that I wasn't happy with the sci-fi series and that I was waiting to get the rights back so that I could uh, sell it to uh, somebody else that I liked more uh, where I could have more input on the books. And is that true? Partly. Uh, I, I was waiting to get the rights back because you know that's what you do uh, when you're when you're done. Uh, uh, and and, it's, and I was I was keeping track. I was looking forward to when the rights were coming back. Um, uh, uh, I, well, I didn't keep a track, you know, exactly to the day. Uh, I, there was usually I was one or two off. But uh, <laughs> as it turned out, they remitted the rights early uh, voluntarily, and so I've got it back now. Uh, and I, I don't know if anything's going to happen or not. Um, the, the way that things work uh, when you're doing a deal with anybody in Hollywood is that nothing is certain until the check is cleared. <laughs> um, and, and even then, you've got to be a little wary. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I wasn't terribly, I, I, I try to look back at the, at the sci-fi show as the glass half full thing. It's like, yeah, it, it did get canceled kind of quick, but on the other hand, they canceled it before they could, they could really ruin anything. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, mean, I try to think positively. Um, I, I, do, I did like uh, Robert Wolf a, a whole lot. I got along with him really well. Uh, I think if there hadn't been uh, uh, some stuff that was kind of, there were, there were a few rugs pulled out from under him that I think without which there, there would have been, it would have been a significantly more successful show. Uh, you know, being told two weeks before they start shooting, oh, we're not gonna do one single story arc. We're not? No, no, we're gonna do a bunch of unconnected episodes because people don't like continuing story arcs. <laughs> they don't? No, no, no. But we've only got two weeks. Like, yeah, yeah, just change all the names and, and use the same stories, just don't connect them to one another. Just, you know, just break all the connections. It's like, yeah, because that would be good writing like that. Uh, uh, so that was the kind of, they, they were dealing with challenges like that. And uh, 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 the folks that were, on, that were actually on it really did a really good job. And uh, there was there was other shenanigans happening that made them made made their job harder, uh, which was too bad. But you know, I got to go with, up and, and visit the show and be on the show, and that was neat. It made us fans. So oh, well, good. Yeah, books, see, exactly. At, like, the, at wow, the very least, so at the very the very worst thing about that show, I mean, you could say, well, at least it was a targeted advertisement that was an hour long every week on <laughs> It's like okay, and it said books right there, and if people liked it, maybe they'd go see the, maybe they'd go read the books, and, and apparently it worked. Uh, so, Twice. but you know, there could be more stuff in the future. We'll see. Uh, as soon as I know that if something is going to happen, I'll go. Something's going to happen, and I'll, I'll spaz out about it, and then I'll, I'll tell somebody to say, write that, write this spaz stuff into some kind of press release. <laughs> yeah, in the gray shirt. Thanks. Uh, two quick questions. One is, what's the pro pro proper pronunciation of Fade's actual name? And also, any chance of any sort of revival or uh, expansion? Of okay, first question was, what's the proper pronunciation of Fade's name? And that's Auraris Valerian. And, uh, uh, and the second question is, is there any chance of, of more Alara stuff? 
Uh, and the answer to that is maybe. Uh, if I go back, I would probably go back uh, like a couple generations in the future and kind of see the results of all the, the, the hero's actions and what kind of world has resulted as, as part of that. Um, it'd be a, probably a much steampunkier Alera if I did that. Cool. Cool. I don't know if I will or not. Maybe I'll, I'll need to pay off my gambling debts or something someday. <laughs> uh, in, in which case, maybe that would be something I have to go do. But at, at the moment, there's, I mean, I've got ideas for so many stories that I, that I, that I need to get done uh, before I die or my brain explodes. Um, so you know, there's a lot of work to do. And, and so maybe I'll go back there and maybe not. I don't know yet. Uh, back here, Black Hat. How much of the whole story arc did you have in mind when you started? How much of the whole story arc did I have in mind when I started the Dresden Files? Yes. Um, yeah, kind of all of it. Um, <laughs> after, my, after, my, after my writing teacher read the first couple chapters and said, you did it. I said, what? And she said, you did it. You'll be able to sell this. I don't know if this will be the first thing you sell, but you will be able to sell this eventually. It's of saleable quality. And I said, oh. And she said, so make sure you've got the rest of it planned out. And I took her kind of literally, and so I, I planned it out. <laughs> and I came back with an outline the next week, and I'm like, okay, so I've got this planned out for about 20 like books, like kind of like their regular case books, and then, like a big old trilogy at the end. I said, do you think that's okay? And, <laughs> you know, because I was too dumb to know that there was no way that I was going to sell a 20 book series to an editor somewhere. Uh, I was just too dumb to, to get that. And she looked at me and said, well. Um, you know, if you get a, a 20 book series sold, I think you'll be doing fine. <laughs> I said, do you think that's enough? Is it ambitious enough? Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> but anyway, that was how long it is. Uh, that was, and it, it was 20-ish of these books. I don't know how many, uh, uh, how many more or less. It's gonna, you know, depend if my son goes to grad school. <laughs> I guess. Uh, but uh, uh, I like to be honest, you know. Uh, but anyway, there's, I've got ideas for a bunch of stuff, and, and we're, we're finally getting to do the really good stuff. Uh, uh, it's kind of the way I feel about the, the Dresden Files now. It's like, finally, I can start doing the fun stuff. Uh, all this and the rest of it's just been warm-up for the good stuff. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, uh, which, so we're, we're going to have a good time in the future. Um, uh, but uh, the, the, for me, it's going to be just a question of trying to get all the story pieces put together so that I can do the trilogy right at the end. Uh, uh, and we'll see, because I've never written a 20-book series with a three-book trilogy gap don't thing before. And, yeah, I looked, and there weren't all that many other people who'd done it either. So. Uh, uh, right here in the black. Do you have any character in either one of the series that, as you're writing them, you just not like them? Or is there any character in either one of the series uh, that, as I'm writing them, I just don't like them? Villain, hero, anybody? Villain, hero, anybody? Um, no, I mean, but like people that I hate? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I mean, e even if somebody's like totally despicable, uh, for me, I've got to look at them and say, well, how can I make them more despicable? How can I make them more despicable? <laughs> Let me do this. And the, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. This, the, you know, I, I can look at that horrible uh, uh, monster and go, oh, yes, that is a thing of wonder. <laughs> I did that. It's, it's, it's totally unsettling. I want to go throw up right now. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I've got that weird perspective as, as the writer. Uh, there's a character in the steampunk that I'm writing uh, who's a, he's a sentient cat. And oh my gosh, that little, he, I just want to slap him around. He's <laughs> such an arrogant little jerk. And yet, and he's hilarious. And, and I mean, and, and you, you know, he's funny. And, and then he comes off being confident too. And it's like, you want to smack him, but <laughs> he was useful. <laughs> you know, so it's like, and, and he'll look at you and like, yeah, of course, I'm a cat. What did you expect? <laughs> Listen, monkey, why don't you go do something useful and get me some chicken? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, that's, the, that's, the, that's what I'm working on right now. It's the first book of the Steampunk series. Uh, it's got the talking cats. And uh, uh, yeah, when you live in a society with talking cats, they're basically the mafia, you know. <laughs> I noticed that you don't have any, that you don't have any mice disturbing your, disturbing your business. Are you, would you like that to continue? <laughs> All right, well, there better be some cream sitting out here for us, because we, we also, not only can we talk, we have opposable thumbs and matches. <laughs> you know, so, seriously, I mean, when you think about that, that's creepy. Cats can mess you up. Uh, really, I mean, if they were working together, thank goodness. Right here. Is your space marshal running out of air yet? Uh, is my space marshal running out of air again? When we last left uh, 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 Mar uh, Marshal Glenn, Clan Glenn Cannon uh, uh, in, in the, the book I was writing, the U.S. Marshal's book, uh, he had just ejected from his ship 
uh, uh, which was going critical, and there was a solar flare coming on, uh, uh, and you know, and he was in a decaying orbit over the surface of the moon. So it was really the only question was, was he going to get nuked, microwaved, or splatted first? <laughs> and he's been there for like six years now. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to get back there. I am. Uh, but it, it, I, I, I'm getting so I, I got really inspired and really fired up on the steampunk series, uh, which I'm having a great time writing. Um, and uh, uh, you know, a lot of the, the character and a lot of the humor is coming really, really well. You know, and I'll, I'll get done reading the section and go, ooh, ooh, that was almost as good as Lois Bujold. Uh, <laughs> and bounce like that, and, and, and uh, it, it makes me happy. And uh, uh, so that's what I've been working on. And I, I've got to get this story done. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, you do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, let's right here. Um, before I got into the Dresden Files, uh, I was really into a series with a private eye in a fantasy world written by Glenn Cook. Did you read those? The Garrett books? Yeah. I've read, read them since I got started, yeah. Okay. I just wondered if they had any influence because the, the, the private eye thing was kind of unique. Uh, the, 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 the Glenn Cook's private, uh, uh, Garrett books, they, they weren't a direct influence on the Dresden Files, although the Black Company was. Right. Uh, uh, the Black Company is one of those books that I, I read when I was about 19 and I went, oh, these suck. These are boring. I don't like these. And I went back after I'd gotten, uh, 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 you know, after I'd gotten a, a minor in history and read the Black Company books. I went, oh my God, these are brilliant. I was too dumb to realize how good these books were. Uh, which is really, if you pay attention, it's kind of a theme of my life. Uh, 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 I suddenly realized how dumb I was not so long ago. Uh, I imagine in the future I'll be realizing how dumb I was not so long ago. But anyway. Um, have you ever thought of collaboration writing, and if so, with who, other than your wife? Have you ever thought of collaboration writing, uh, uh, if so, and if so, with who, other than my wife? And, and dude, me and my wife tried to write something together our junior year of high school, and nearly killed one another with our number two. <laughs> and it just did not work out at all. Uh, so no, we're not going, we're not walking anywhere close to that again. Three dimensions is not enough separation for us while we're working. Uh, because I mean, it's not enough that I, we're in different parts of the house. I have to be doing it at a different time of the day uh, than she is. So yeah, I get all my work done between midnight and, and dawn, uh, which is when she's sleeping. And then I usually crash about dawn, and then she gets to work while I can't interfere with her uh, because I'm sleeping. And then I'll get up in the afternoon, and we'll hang out, and we'll do stuff. Uh, we'll do errands and hang out in the evening. And, and uh, then when she goes to bed, then I'll find, okay, I can go back to work again. Uh, uh, but anyway, so I mean, yeah, we've, we're, we're kind of an odd couple that way, but it works out uh, uh, because nobody can say, hey, you know what you should do? No, I won't do that. Be quiet. Stop suggesting. <laughs> we'll go to one another. I'm having a problem with a, with a plot. With a plot, Maybe you could talk to me about it. It's like, okay, and, and she'll explain the problem. I say, well, this is the obvious way to fix it. No, that's not the way to fix it. But uh, in refuting you, I figured out the way I do need to fix it. So... <laughs> um, and then I do exactly the same thing to her, and that's how it works. We really are married. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, right here, white shirt. Yeah. Is there any uh, plans on expanding on the comic books that you've done with Dark Horse regarding the Dresden Files? Is there any plan on expanding the comic books I've done with Dark Horse regarding the Dresden Files? Um, I, I don't think we're going to be expanding, or I think we're going to be continuing. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Full Moon, is, 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 I think, is in the can, is on the way through the, the pipeline now. And uh, next we're doing uh, an original story called Ghoul Goblin that I wrote and outlined and that Mark Powers wrote to a script. Um, uh, and that's going to be a story of, uh, of something Harry was doing between Full Moon and Great Peril. And then after that they're going to do Great Peril. Um, yeah, Ghoul Goblin's a good one. It's, it's, uh, 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 Harry finds himself uh, invited to a small town uh, by a, a, a sheriff's deputy. He wants him to try and protect this family who's, being, who's obviously being hunted and killed by something. And, and Harry finds out it's two somethings having a duel and now he's got to get between them and, and find out about you know what the what the accords are all about, and uh, uh, so he's having fun with that, uh, and uh, uh, it'll be coming out it'll be coming out fairly soon. I think the first I think the first issue is going to be out in about a month. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, right here with this coat on his shoulders. Yeah, um, about the Dark Horse comics. You ever think about? Uh, have I ever thought about turning the Dark Horse comics into an animated series is the question. And the answer is, I would love an animated series. Um, yes. How do I turn a comic into an animated series? Because I, I don't know. I mean, the best I could do would be to like to use the City of Heroes engine to do an animated comic. <laughs> uh, uh, for, 
for Harry Dresden, which I was actually thinking about doing at one point, was just doing uh, you know screenshots from City of Heroes. Uh, you should buy City of Heroes and they closed it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, they, and they closed it, yeah. No, I, well, I, I don't think I could have bought City of Heroes. I don't know if, uh, what kind of money uh, uh, you, I, you, you think I have, but uh, <laughs> it's not that money. Maybe they were selling it for pennies at the time. Oh, well, maybe then. Uh, maybe I could pick it up for pennies. Uh, uh, at the moment, I am I am what is called land rich, uh, which means uh, because uh, I've got my nerd farm, and uh, 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 and I, I there's there's a lot to be done at a nerd farm to keep that up. Wow, I, I had no idea how much work there was out there. Uh, uh, okay, let's see over here in back. Harry says he doesn't do hats. How do you feel about hatted Harry and all the artwork? Oh, Harry says he doesn't do hats. How do I feel about hatted Harry and all the artwork? <laughs> I believe that the advertising for Harry Dresden has been intelligent and effective. <laughs> I am making a statement of my own free will, and not because there is a penguin representative here. It is one of those things that I don't like, but I get. Um, I, I kind of go, because huh, lots of times folks will show up cosplaying, and they'll be like, here's the, the, my hairdressing cosplay. And it's like, you're wearing the hat. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, I swear, if I ever do give him a hat, it's gonna be, I'm going to have him get Indiana Jones's fedora from the Smithsonian. Yeah. Yeah. The real one. And, then, and that will be, I mean, that would be a worthy hat. And, and until then. Uh, uh, but anyway. Uh, okay, right here in purple. Uh, about the steampunk series, is it going to be magic in there? Is it going to be technology? Is it going to be magic versus technology thing? Uh, the answer to that is um, the, the magic in the Dresden Files is technology. It's just really, really advanced. Uh, 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 it's something that, they're, that we don't really understand with what we've got right now, but I mean, there's actual rules to how it works and, and so on. Um, yeah, there's going to be, I mean, there's stuff that looks like magic in steampunk. It's not necessarily really magic, um, but there it is. Uh, uh, and there are characters who deal with it who kind of look like wizards, they're not. Uh, uh, but they might as well be, if, if for, for story purposes, uh, none of them are sane. Uh, <laughs> they're called etherealists, and if you're an etherealist, you deal with etheric energy and, and uh, uh, you know how to make it work. And you're not like an etheric engineer who can build a cool gizmo using it. You know, you can just do it without the gizmo. And uh, 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 it, it tends to make, do funny things to your brain. So, you know, one of them, you know, the, the kind of the master wizard of the entire place can't open doors because doorknobs defeat him. <laughs> They're highly advanced technology and he just can't understand them. And so he's got an apprentice who can open doors, but she can't talk to anybody except her little jar of crystals that she has with her. Uh, uh, so, you know, she's sort of useless in other situations. And the really scary etherealists are the ones who are absolutely sane, the ones who will pour you tea and say, would you like some crap, you know, some, a biscuit with that. And, and those are the ones you have to look out for, because they're, 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 they're wrong in a bad way. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, that's, that's part of the story, it's coming. Uh, over here, behind the bookshelf. Yes? Is James Marcher's going to read this one? Is James Marcher's going to read this one? No idea. Uh, I've got no idea what they're going to do. Uh, uh, I'm just the guy who writes the stories, man. I, I, I sit at home in a keyboard and I send them off and they give me some orders and I go, okay. And uh, I think he's talking about cold what days. I, what I do. In fact, over here, where's my being smart? Yeah, he's What's talking that? about cold days. Oh, are you talking about cold days? Yes. Oh, cold days. Yeah, he already recorded it. <laughs> right, yeah, it's available. You can buy it. Uh, uh, yeah, Marsters was on this one and, and, I, and uh, I haven't got to listen to the whole thing yet. I heard he did a good job. He seemed to do a pretty good job. Uh, uh, and, and you know he's he, he's one of those guys that takes his work seriously, and I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, but let's see, who else do we have that hasn't had a question yet? Over here, over here, over here. I have a quick uh, tripartite question. If I'll keep each one short. Okay. Uh, plot lines, general plot lines. You have uh, plot lines extend, roughed out, extending through the entirety of the uh, Dresden Files. Right. Uh, the plot lines that you have had for the books that have been released before, how much from when you roughed out those plot lines to the release of the book, how much did those plot lines shift and change? Okay, how much did the plot lines shift and change between what I designed way back when for school and the release of the books? Um, not too much. 
Okay, uh, so we're, we're going pretty, we're, we're, we're pretty much on schedule so far. So the future plot lines, you don't anticipate those shifting too much from what you've got right now? Then. I just, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try, but I mean, I've never done this before, so, you know, uh, I'm pretty much we're doing, give me a drum roll, I'm going to do this without a net, and we'll see if it works. Um, right here with the, yeah. Um, so the first time we saw you at Mysterious Galaxy in San Diego, there were about 30, 40 people in the room, and then at Comic Con, on your spotlight, you were convinced that hardly any people were there for you. So how has it been to go from that kind of recognition to the fact that you're now a master storyteller and pull crowds? You're talking to me, right? <laughs> um, see, the thing is, is this is not something that I've done. I, I just I just sit at my keyboard and write books, man. I mean, that's what I do. I, uh, I, I find it incredibly exciting that I've managed to prove by keeping track of my writing patterns through a, a spreadsheet and actual data that I am more productive if I play a couple hours of video games before I sit down and start writing. <laughs> That's the most exciting development of my life. Uh, as far as master storyteller, I haven't got done telling the story yet. I guess we'll see. Uh, 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 you know, we've got a, we still got plenty to do. Uh, but. That's that's been that's been you guys. It's been fans who who have liked the book and you, you've gotten out and gone and, and met each other and done fun stuff together. And I, I think it's a reflection of the people who are reading the books more than it's a reflection of me. I'm just writing a story, um, and what I do is not terribly complicated. I tell long I, I tell long convoluted, well documented lies for a living. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's the readers who are the folks who, 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 can, who can read these books and draw something maybe more out of it than I really meant to put in there, because I'm just telling a story. Uh, uh, I, think, I think it's y'all who do it better, more, who do it more than me. Uh, uh, because I know exactly how goofy and useless I am. Uh, uh, and you guys don't. You don't have to live with me or anything like that. You just get to see me when there's a bunch of people here. Right here. Sound like my wife. Uh, <laughs> I'm not on that subject. At least two full universes, all by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, with all due respect, you're wrong. I don't have a question. I just had to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, 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 and uh, you say I've created them all by myself, but I've just I've just stolen pieces from here and there and put them together. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's like almost anything that I've done. You can say, oh, well, you put this together from uh, from Scooby-Doo and Buffy the Vampire <laughs> and Sherlock Holmes, and that's what he did, and, and that's the Dresden Files. Yeah, well, that, arguably, that's that, that's fair. Uh, you know, I mean, the the Codex Alera was put together from Lost Roman Legion and Pokemon. <laughs> and, well, maybe. Maybe. I mean, maybe that. Maybe I'm the only one bent enough to, to go do that. <laughs> you know, but I. But if so, it's not something that you know I, I really, you know, made happen as much as just uh, that was what I was having fun with, and people seemed to like it. Uh, it's hard to claim credit for something like that. You know. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs> I'm glad people are having a good time, though. That's the important thing. Uh, in a purple shirt. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering. Besides Harry's, whose dialogue is the most fun for you to write? Besides Harry's, whose dialogue is the toughest for me to write? Most fun. Oh, most fun to write. Uh, that damn cat is awfully fun. <laughs> I mean, every time I do a point of view chapter from him, it, it winds up being twice as long as the other chapters, and it's, and it's hilarious. And people are like, you're going to have to dial the cat down. He's, you really, the cat isn't, isn't even at 11 right now. He's at some kind of, uh, at some kind of ordinal number. Uh, 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 he's a lot of fun. Harry's a lot of fun. Harry's always fun to write. Uh, uh, Bob the Skull is, is always fun. <laughs> and, and Butters, too. Butters is really... I mean, if there's ever, like, a movie or a TV show, I'm going to see if I can audition for Butters. <laughs> it's really, he's, he's, he's kind of the every nerd, and I can just kind of have him look and look and say things that it's like, well, you know, this is what a nerd really needs to say right here. Uh, you know, maybe one that knows he's going to get punched in the mouth for saying it, but he needs to say it anyway. I, I was that nerd who got punched in the mouth a lot when I was little. There, there were bullies and things. I had the very bad taste to be, like, smaller than everybody in class and, and smarter than, than most of the people in the class and, and, and too dumb to not talk about it. So I, 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 yeah, I got beat up a lot. Uh, but anyway, uh, Blue Shirt. Uh, two questions. First one. 
Sure. Just coming from Reddit. Um, the question is, um, sorry, it's, um, why did Ebenezer not take over Molly's training in Ghost Ray? Uh, why did Ebenezer, the first question is, why did Ebenezer not take over Molly's training in Ghost Story? Um, uh, I would suggest you read Cold Days because Molly asked more or less the same question. <laughs> and, Harry has to answer. and that's a reasonable question. The second question is uh, one of the aspects of your books that I like most of all is your foreshadowing. Is there a small aspect of foreshadowing that everybody's kind of missed or glossed over that you can kind of clue us into? Or okay, is there. Uh, he says, I seem to like foreshadowing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> is there a small shadow of foreshadowing that people seem to have missed or not clued into uh, uh, yeah there's lots of it and I'm not going to tell you what it is because you know then when I use it later they'll be like oh cool and if I tell you now it'll be like ah oh, lame <laughs> uh, yeah that's what I love too uh, one of my favorite series uh, uh, that I watched when I was learning how to write was Babylon 5 and Babylon 5 uh, whether you liked it or hated it, Babylon 5 was very good at taking small story elements from early in the series and sort of slowly building on them until you until you could realize things that were coming down the line. You know, uh, by the time you'd, you'd seen something the second or third time, you went, "Oh my gosh, that is what this means!" And then and then, then when it would develop a little later in the season, you were like, "I am so brilliant for having figured that out." It's like, no, but that writer was brilliant for making you feel that way. <laughs> And uh, that, I mean, that was such an awesome that, that was such an awesome thing to do, and so it was so rewarding for the long term watchers. And I always wanted to do something like that with the Dresden Files as well. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think if you get into Cold Days, uh, you'll you, you, I mean you'll see the point where I, I get to draw some stuff out of Stormfront uh, that is relevant to the, the current story. And 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 people people who've read it have been like, that was just chilling. And I'm like, well, thank you. I <laughs> I planned that a long time ago, and, and I finally got to make it work. Uh, 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 right here, Pat. Is there any way you can possibly write faster because the weight is killing me? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, well, Video uh, games. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I've been playing more video games, so <laughs> I've been working out. No, actually, I'm trying to I'm trying to put myself through a kind of a writer's version of, of P90X, uh, to where you know I'll be able to kind of push out a few more words every day. Um, uh, uh, plus, uh, uh, it's really it's gotten harder. There, there's so many more. There's so many more people who who say like Jim, will you come see us? Uh, you know, when I first got started, that never happened. I was I was traveling maybe you know maybe seven or eight days a, a year, if that. And and you know then I figured up a couple of years ago, and it was it was it was like like ninety days a year I was traveling, and then that's that's the time I don't get to write. Uh, uh, I'm not very good at writing uh, when you when you get me out of my little fishbowl. Uh, I'm kind of a hermit. Um, but uh, you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Let me just shut up. I'll go get my keyboard and. Just <laughs> That's probably the, probably the, probably the smartest thing to do. But I, I'm working on it. I'm going to try to. I, I want to do two books a year. I want to maintain that pace. All right. Wow. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, there are people. I mean, the pulp the, the pulp writers, uh, you know, from the, the golden silver age of science fiction, man, they they were turning out six seven books a year. That's just what they did. Uh, uh, I'll do my best. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Yeah, okay, those books were 150 pages. That's true. And they weren't always that good. <laughs> that, I'm not always that good either. Right here. What games make me more productive? Lately, I've been playing a lot of League of Legends. And uh, no, you can't know you can't know my summoner name because. Uh, I I am a hyper competitive jerk on League of Legends and I want to continue to do it. And if it's just some random jerk who yells at you, that's one thing. But if it's somebody who you have a high opinion of because you think he writes good books, then that might hurt somebody's feelings. So uh, I'm not going to tell anybody my summoner name, but you know, uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll I'll kill you someday. <laughs> But it was, uh, 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 yeah, I, I, my, my kids were playing it, and uh, my kid was playing it, and he and his friends kept having these conversations I couldn't understand. And I kept demanding that they speak English, and they're like, oh, you got to come play this game so you'll be able to learn language. It's like, okay. And it's like, now I'm playing, and it's like this sport. And you've got to do, you've got to do it, it, it's ridiculous. You've got to do research to keep up with this game. Well, I've got to watch this professional round to see how they play it. 
Uh, uh, but anyway, yeah, so a couple hours of League of Legends. You know, I do better when I win. Uh, I, get more done, I get more done when I, if, if I got, if I have like a rampage evening where it's like, look at that, there's six wins in a row. I am awesome. I am awesome. And then I go sit on the keyboard, it's like, oh, 2,500 words in an hour. Great. Um, uh, 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 but then there's the other evenings where it's like, I, I can't win for losing. And uh, 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 it's like, oh, 1,200 words. <laughs> Whatever, I quit. <laughs> right What's the hardest part about being a writer? Uh, the hardest part about being a writer, uh, <laughs> oh, God, the hardest part about being a writer is probably uh, when you, it hurts your wrist when you sign books. <laughs> okay, that, that's, that's the hardest part for me. Before that, I guess it was probably the nine years that I wrote as a part-time job and didn't get paid anything. That was kind of hard. Uh, when I went home uh, on, uh, on holidays and had family come up to me and say, Jim, when are you going to get a real job and, and stop this writing thing? That was kind of hard. Uh, once you're done with that, though, it, it's, rest is gravy. Uh, you know, now my biggest problem is, oh, my hand hurts from signing so many books. What an awesome problem. <laughs> Man, I mean, if everybody had problems that awesome, it would be a much better place. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Wait, okay, oh, wait, the back here, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, regarding Harry's first use of magic, in Proven Guilty, he tells Molly the story, and in Ghost Story, he reflects back on that moment. The stories overall are the same, but there are a lot of small details. Um, that can be explained, but I was wondering if that was proof of a change in the timeline which you previously acknowledged may have happened in the series. Uh, yeah, it's, it's happened several times, and I'm not going to tell you where because I'm going to use that in a book. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, a lot of it is... Harry's... Is, I, I'm trying to write Harry as much uh, like a person as I can, and people remember things differently, especially over time. Uh, uh, you, when you, I mean, you think you remember things perfectly, but uh, a lot of you know, I, I've run into people that I hadn't seen for 20 years, and they'll say, "Do you remember this?" And I say, "No, I, I don't remember that at all." They're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, you totally uh, got in this fight and and uh, and beat this guy up." And I did. <laughs> well, it pretty much looked like it from where I was standing. Yeah, it's like I don't remember it like that at all. I just remember, I just remember helping him up off the floor, <laughs> or something like that. But but the point is 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 that. If, we, we remember things in very odd ways, and you can see it in the short term uh, w when uh, an investigator uh, goes around and tries to get every, all the witnesses to, who just saw something to tell them what he saw, and everybody saw something a little bit different, and it just gets more and more skewed and magnified over time. Uh, 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 so Dresden, you know, Dresden was telling Molly what, he, what, what she needed to hear mainly, because uh, uh, he was concerned about her, and you know, he was more or less he was more or less stating what happened, but he's not the most reliable narrator in the whole world because people aren't. Uh, 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 and that's 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 one of the great things about 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 people. I think uh, I think it's I, I don't know if it's going to kill us or if it's going to be the only thing only way we can manage to to get by is, is by saying oh I'm really not quite sure what happened that far back maybe we should just move ahead. <laughs> uh, right here. Uh, yeah, two questions. Uh, first, if you could cast any actor, living or dead, to play your ideal Harry, who would it be? Ooh, the living or dead thing's hard. Yeah. If I could cast any actor, living or dead, to play Harry, who would it be? Uh, I would cast 1977 Harrison Ford. I would say. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, Blade Runner age Harrison Ford would be fine. That that would do. I would accept. It. <laughs> Second question: uh, You're you're obviously not a gamer. Um, I'm, I'm an avid gamer. What do you think of the tabletop game? The Files, what do I think of the Dresden Files tabletop game? I think I'm the only guy in the world who can't play it. <laughs> because you think about it, if you're, but, I mean, think about trying to be my, my, my DM, okay? Trying to think about being my storyteller. <laughs> no, DM, it is this way. If necessary, I'll write it that way. That's <laughs> There's just no way that works. Uh, and, 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 and then if I'm the DM, then it's like I sit down with these people and it's like, oh, this is just like work. <laughs> so, you know, what can I do? Uh, uh, but other people seem to be having a good time and I like that. And I stole a whole bunch of things from the game system uh, to run the Warhammer game that I actually ran to build the world for the Steampunk. Uh, and it worked great. So, But uh, uh, right over here, right, where? Right over here? Right here. Yeah, so if Harry ever found out he was a fictional character and he found a way to get to you, what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I'm still going. Actually, I got asked that question before yesterday, and, and I'm still going to go with punch in the nose. <laughs> uh, I mean, Harry's a no. He's going to punch me in the nose. Harry's the kind of guy who can, you know, I mean, he can. If he wants to, he can take out like me and this building and the next building and the mall across the street. You know, I mean, he can do that. Uh, uh, and so he's got much more of a sense of proportion in terms of, you know, uh, if I need to take vengeance on somebody, what's the appropriate level of vengeance? And uh, I think punching me right off this chair and back into this display would do for him. <laughs> and he'd just shake his head and walk out. <laughs> Uh, uh, that being the case, I think he probably, I think when somebody told him that, he'd have to look at him and say, who are you calling fiction? <laughs> uh, uh, unless there's something to the whole, the, the whole uh, storyline, and I don't know if you've ever heard of that, that whenever you're making up a story, that by doing so you're creating an alternate universe, in which case, I've got a lot to answer for. <laughs> I mean, as a creator of the universe, because I am a cool and vengeful god. <laughs> Uh, let's see, right here. Okay, right here. Okay. Um, mine's a process question. You've uh, mentioned that you're aiming for two books a year. How long do you write per day? Do you go for a time limit? Do you go for a words limit? Uh, how, okay, when I'm writing, what is my process for during the writing of the day? Do I have a time limit? Do I have a words limit? Uh, what I really like to do is to knock out a chapter all at once and to send it off to the beta readers so they can go, why didn't you write more? Uh, that, which is the goal for the beta readers is to is to torture them. Um, if I can torture the beta readers, you know, from chapter to chapter, then I can keep people who are reading it all at once turning the pages, and, and that's that's the goal. Um, so my goal is to sit down and write a whole chapter. It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes uh, uh, it, uh, I'll have to break it down into a couple of days, depending on what I'm writing. Um, in terms of in terms of length of time, it varies a lot. Um, when I'm writing slow, I'll go as slow as about 300 words an hour, and that's when I'm grinding. And I'll, I'll just sit at the keyboard for 11 hours a day, just going, uh, and, and watch some TV, and uh, macro meme, uh, okay, Facebook, all right, I gotta stop this and work. Uh, uh, and that's kind of the, the painful uh, uh, drab way to do it. Although the words that come out the other side aren't, any, aren't really any different. Uh, when, I, when I'm smart, I'll get myself into the right frame of mind and be able to ha have the the, uh, the the way to do it smart is to get myself the right frame of mind with video games. Uh, and I've proven this scientifically. And even Shannon had to go, yeah, look at that. Uh, what can I do? You're just broken, Jim. Um, uh, well, honey, I'm gonna go get to work. I'll be downstairs at the computer. Uh, Plainly of Legends. Um, but uh, and then when I do that, I'll, I've I've I can I've done 2,200 words an hour. Uh, you know, I mean, and that's when I'm on a tear. Uh, uh, writing the damn cat is has been my speed record in terms of my entire career is that I've kept track of it. Is, is writing that cat because uh, he's just so easy. Because all you have to do is write how you're better than everybody and everything else that's happening around you, <laughs> and to be able to detail in every respect their flaws, you know, and to be able to make comment on their on their their stupid society. Uh, it's always fun to write that outsider viewpoint, uh, the person who's not a part of human society who can look at the way we act and go, that's just stupid. Uh, uh, or I don't get that at all, because uh, you can really say things that you can't say any other way that way. But, uh, and black teacher. Yes, um, <clears throat> part of my favorite parts of your novel are the divine and the demonic, and how they kind of play off each other, and how they have rules. Um, but I just wanted to ask, what made you decide that Chicago wasn't enough? That all of creation has to be at stake? Oh, what did I? What made me decide that Chicago wasn't enough? That all of creation had to be at stake? Well, it's not all of creation. It's just all of this creation. Uh, 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 I mean, but we haven't really pulled the camera back that far enough yet. But there's a lot of reality in the Dresden Files. Uh, Dresden Files is a is a universe that is driven by free will. And every time you make a choice, it creates a new universe. Uh, so there's a there's this vast spectrum of universe out there, uh, and it's not just ours. It's it's yeah, there's causality going off in every direction. Uh, so uh, uh, a a philosophical war on that scale is something that is just so tremendous that you can barely imagine it. Uh, and and it, while it, it it sort of dwarfs in, into unimportance our particular universe, at the same time, the only way to win that war is is one choice at a time and one person at a time. Uh, uh, and that's really what's going on as far as the angels, on, on the level of where the angels are operating at, that's what they're concerned with. Uh, uh, on, 
on the level what Dresden's operating at, it's like, how can I survive until next chapter? <laughs> and that's sort of, I mean, that's sort, and, and that's sort of the, and that's sort of really the, the problem that we've got, you know, is how do we, you know, as people, how do we look out and see how to fix the things that are wrong with our world when we're basically going, how do I get to the next chapter? You know, how can we have that, that longer viewpoint? Or do we need it? You know, I don't know. I don't know the answers to questions like that, but uh, I enjoy I enjoy the hell out of torturing Dresden with them. <laughs> uh, that's really kind of the point of what I do. But uh, um, let's see, is there somebody you haven't got right here in the picture? You know, one of the things about being a fan is, particularly with this series, there's a lot of characters that, that we really like, and then you know, if a book will come and go, and you don't see enough of a character that you like, you're like, oh man, I wish there had just been a little more of this person who I really like. Do you ever feel like that as the writer, where you, you have characters where, that you like to write, and the story just doesn't allow you to get back around to that that person? Okay, the question was, um, uh, uh, fans who are reading the series, especially a series that's got a big cast, uh, they'll have favorite characters that they'll, sometimes they'll go, oh, I didn't get enough of that character this book. As a writer, do I ever feel the same way? And at times, yeah. Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, I try and really, I, I try and really throw myself into all the characters. So I mean, I'm never really disappointed about who's there or who's not there. Um, uh, it, it's not kind of the same. It's not really the same thing for me. But if 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 there are characters you guys want to see more of, like drop me an email or say something on the board or something like that. Occasionally, I'll go, hey guys, who should who should be the sidekick on the next book? And uh, and and then people would do a poll and they say we want more more Murphy. It's like very well there will be more Murphy and proven guilty. And, and that's what I did because you know I'm writing a book for the audience and, and it's kind of it's all the same to me in many ways. Um, but uh, 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 but yeah I mean you know send me an email let me know go on go on the boards. Um, I pay attention to the readers because uh, uh, you guys spend the money on the books and I need that or they'll take my house away. <laughs> Uh, back here, glasses. Um, what is he who walks behind on the cost of enemies like him? And where do they reside? Uh, say that. Say the second part of the question again. And where do they reside? No, the the part after he who walks behind. And, uh, the class of enemies like him. Uh, wh okay. What what is he who walks behind in the class of enemies like him? And where do they reside? Oh come on. <laughs> uh, 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 read cold days, and you'll see one of uh, uh, he who walks behind skinny buddies and. Uh, <laughs> And you kind of see where he walks behind falls in. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if you read the book yet or not. Okay, well, there, there's something in there, uh, uh, and you, you'll, you'll, you'll get to see you'll get to see one of the walkers uh, kind of upset, and uh, and the results of it. So, uh, right here. Are you going to know more about the Oblivion War? Probably not, because Dresden isn't really involved in that. Uh, uh, that was really frustrating for me to come up with it because I thought it was a great idea. Uh, but then it's like, but, but Harry doesn't know about it uh, because that's really the whole point of the thing is you're trying to make people not know about stuff. Uh, uh, so probably there won't be a whole lot more no, although uh, I've got a couple ideas for spin-off stuff that, that could involve the Oblivion War uh, uh, that I'll write for my gambling debts one day. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but yeah, I don't think there's going to be any more in the Dresden Files though because you know Harry's got enough going on. Uh, uh, I've kind of fulfilled his plate up already, and I don't need to add another war on top of that because I'm, I'm not able to handle that much. Uh, you can only keep so many plates spinning on those poles, uh, uh, and I'm running back and forth pretty frantically right now. So, uh, Black shirt right here. Any uh, movement on that, uh, that story idea you had for the post apocalyptic world where the heroes failed? Oh, the, uh, the, okay, any movement? Have I, is there any movement on the st story idea I had for the post apocalyptic world where the heroes blew it? Um, not yet. Uh, I, I know I want to write that where you know where the you, the, where the place the story starts is in the apocalypse after the giant after the the, the big confrontation and the heroes just completely failed to win. Uh, 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 I don't know why I'm not quite sure why why they would have failed, but the whole idea would be here's the world that is horrible because the heroes blew it. New heroes time. Uh, uh, it's going to be ten times as hard for you guys. Go. Uh, uh, okay, right here. Uh, speaking of spinoffs, is there after your twenty book? Trilogy. Is there a chance to do like a young McCoy? After my twenty book trilogy, is there is there a chance to do a young McCoy? Uh, sort of. I, I kind of got to have this idea for writing the the, the French and Indian Wars and the American Revolution in the Dresden Files universe uh, because it's really interesting. Uh, uh, I mean, I've got all this story piled up from it because I had to compile the story for the background of these characters who were you know the senior guys now, uh, uh, you know the senior council guys and and. and 
it. And, and while I was putting it together, I'm like, oh man, that would be totally awesome to write it like that. Uh, it, I, I need to learn something about that war. Uh, I, I, it's, it's one of those things I'm going to have to educate myself on the history of it a little bit better. Uh, which I, and I want to do it at some point, and maybe I can do it before I die. I don't know. Uh, I, I figured it up right now. The stories that I have ideas for, I, I can't live long enough unless I get to be like 102. So you people who are in biomed get to work on that that brain transfer. <laughs> uh, you do that, and I'll keep writing. Uh, here in that. Uh, two quick questions. One is you mentioned uh, using ancient Roman history. I noticed your use of like really really archaic words, you know, in terms of like cursor and stuff like that. Is that stuff that you came equipped with prior to knowledge, or did you have to actually do a lot of research for this? Uh, I was putting together, when, when I was putting together Cursus Fury, did I, did I come equipped with a lot of this ancient, this knowledge of ancient Rome, or did I go and research it? Um, some yes, some I did have already, uh, uh, because I, I really loved history, uh, uh, and some I didn't, and I had to go out and find it. Uh, uh, I kind of, I, I mean, stuff like coming up with the words like for cursors, I like taking those old Latin words and finding ways to use them uh, uh, and, and try to make, cursors was hard though because uh, uh, for the first, about the first half of the first book I was writing, every time I typed the word cursor, I saw a little blinking square in my head. <laughs> but eventually, if you keep going, it kind of turns into, okay, wait, that's something else now. Uh, that, that would be another place to go back to Alera, would be to go to, to watch the, the, uh, uh, the 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 class of cursors that uh, that Aaron uh, uh, Aaron Aaron Batman Aaron uh, turns into uh, the next generation spies. But yeah, the first you know the first uh, uh, Canem cursor. And then just uh, for you know inspiring writers, what's the single best piece of advice you give somebody? For aspiring writers, the single best piece of advice I can give you: write every day. Uh, even if you only write a word, you are one word closer to getting paid than you were at the start of the day. <laughs> and that's how you have to think of it. Uh, it's one of those things that you count, you, that nobody else can motivate you for. No, uh, nobody else can, and more than likely nobody else will. Uh, so it's got to be you that's driving yourself. And the way you do that is by just refusing to stop. You write something every day, and, and that's what keeps you going forward. It took me nine years. Uh, and, and now looking back, if it had taken me 20 years, I'd still want to have put, the, put that effort in. Uh, because this is a pretty great life. I get, I get to you know, do the stuff I want to do. I get to be at home. I don't ever have to wear a tie. That's awesome. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it's worth it. If you, can, if, you can, if you can work at it, if you can give yourself the skills, it's a matter of time to break in. Here, in the, in, in, with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> Can I stop being a jerk to Harry because I put him a whole bunch through so much stuff because she just wants him to have a good life? No, that's not the <laughs> answer. Uncertain. That's what I'm oh, sorry. What'd you say? He deserves a good life. Yeah. Lots of people deserve a good life. Can you give it to them, Frodo? <laughs> It's no fun to read about people having a good life. Yeah, you do. I, you, I mean, which is which is a horrible thing for me to say because I kind of a good life. <laughs> but the reason I have a good life is because Dresden suffers and it's going to continue. <laughs> okay, we got five minutes, so just a couple more questions. Oh, right. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, the calendars that we did. This was the world the world builders calendars, uh, uh, the charity that Pat Rothfuss supports. And he invited a bunch of us to, to put in stuff for the calendars. And uh, so we've got a Dresden Files themed calendar in April. I think it's April, yeah. April. Uh, uh, featuring uh, featuring uh, uh, Molly uh, in the, from, from a scene where Harry was looking at, at possible multiple futures. And uh, Priscilla modeled for it, and Lee Moria did the art for it. Uh, uh, and and it's, it's awfully cool and groovy. I kind of like the... Ooh. Well, now you broke your present. Uh, oh, no. Eye. I kind of like the Lady Gaga version on the right better. <laughs> that, that, that's a great look. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, so those, but those are for sale here at the store. Uh, it's to support a great charity. Uh, uh, so if you, if, you, if, you're, if you like it, and it's got a bunch of other people in it too. It's, it's got Ray Bradbury, Patricia Bitt, uh, Briggs, uh, Jacqueline Carey, Neil Gaiman, Charlene Harris. I mean, it's got, it's got pictures from all over. Uh, George R. R. Martin's got one in there of Cersei Lannister that's just gorgeous. Uh, uh, that's, well, you know. Curvy blondes, okay. <laughs> if I must, George, just for charity, you know, for the charity. 
I will look at that in December. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get some folks I haven't hit yet. Wave back. Uh, how do I hit, put myself in the head of a teenage girl? Well, first of all, she's not a teenage girl. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. She's, I mean, she's in her, she's in, she's in her, I think she's 24 uh, currently. Uh, and second, I was married to a woman that age. Um, so uh, uh, I kind of, I kind of got to know her. Uh, most of the female characters in the Dresden Files are, are, to some degree or another, based on on, on what I know about my wife, uh, including the villains. <laughs> Um, so no, no, she'd be proud of that. Uh, uh, you, you don't mess with Shannon, and that's and she, she's, that's my villainous side. Nobody screws with me. Uh, uh, and uh, that was really probably mostly where it came from. I'll, I'll go check with her. Hey, Shannon, I need to know a chick thing. Uh, okay, uh, this chick once over thing. What what is that about? Oh yeah, you've got to be able to to assess somebody, and, and she'll, she'll go over. This is this is something my mother taught me. Oh okay, wow, really. Uh, uh, my dad never gave me anything like that. <laughs> he taught me that I needed to change the oil regularly. That's pretty much it. Uh, uh, and one, we'll go one more right here. Given the life and death sense of Donald, Donald and Harry, can we expect to see Morgan in one of these afterlife instances? Uh, given the, the life or death flexibility thing that's going on in the Dresden Files, can we expect to see Morgan in, in, one, of these, in one of these instances? Uh, Morgan died pretty convincingly. Uh, uh, and, and, and well from his point of view. Um, uh, and and uh, that, Morgan was one of those characters that I wanted to give a, a, a groovy death. Uh, uh, so even though he died, uh, uh, he died kind of being who, he, who and what he was. He's, he's got no issues to, to come back to Earth to solve. But uh, uh, in terms of seeing him again, uh, well, that's always possible. Yeah, that's, that's probably possible in Book 17. <laughs> Yeah, book seventeen is going to be a book that people are going to that people people are going to pull their hair about over. I think but, you know, we've got fifteen and sixteen to do first. So uh, sixteen, I, I think sixteen is going to be called Bagman, and I'm 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 making sure I've got copies of all the Ocean's Eleven movies on the on the DVR <laughs> so that I can have appropriate background material for writing. I thought it was Skin but, Game. What was that? Skin Game. Ooh, Skin Game. That was also the other good idea. Yeah, uh, it was going to be Skin Game or Bagman. It's going to depend on on how I. Oh, I I'm sorry, I'm going into writer space. No, I'm not oh, finishing anything else. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, there's going to be we're, there's going to be a heist. Uh, next book will be a heist, um, and the problem the problem won't really be the heist so much as the people he has to do the heist with, because uh, uh, this is uh, this is a book that book number that's a multiple of five, so the Denarians are back, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think we're going to get Michael off the bench as well. So. Oh. Yeah. Guy, he's enjoying his retirement. And the new people want me to start torturing him. See, oh, you're asking me to have mercy on Harry. Oh, Michael, yeah, throw him back in the meat. All right, that's I'm done with you. We're gonna sign some books now. Okay. What? That's 15. That's the next book. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you a little rundown on what we're gonna do here. First of all, we're gonna whisk him back into the office and give him a little break. And I'm going to carry you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, what we're going to do after that is we're going to start pick picking up the chairs, stacking them up, and we're going to move the bookshelves from that room back out here. There will be shoppable area for you guys. Feel free to buy more stuff. <laughs> as well as feel free to go have some beer and wine in the cafe. I don't think they're working hard enough right now, so I would really appreciate it if you went in there and just slam them. Um, then we're going to call numbers 51 through 100, and we'll take things in blocks of 50 after that. So you have time to hang out, go have something to eat, socialize. I know you guys want to all meet other fans, so do that. And um, and it's not raining; it's nice and cool outside too. If yeah, you guys want to I chill know out. it's really hot in here right now, so if you guys want to step outside, you've got time. And uh, I believe that's it. Yeah. Yeah.